Okay, folks, uh, for those listening in the room as well as on the telephone, sorry about the technical difficulties. We're going to call the meeting to order. And if would, everybody would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are seating two alternates uh, tonight. We are, uh, uh, because uh, uh, Mr. Lockwood and uh, uh, Peggy Chapel can't be uh, in attendance tonight, so we have, um, if you introduce. Paula Johnson, alternate. And Matt Peters, alternate. All right, and for the regularly seated members, if we could introduce. Eric, Eric Lukey, Beald, member. Uh, Eric Myers, chair tonight. John Boardman. Brennan Shahan. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll open up the public session. If anybody would like to come forward and speak about items that are not on the agenda tonight. Anybody on the telephone? All right, hearing none, we'll close the public session and we will move on to the action of the minutes. I, I looked over the minutes and they, they looked acceptable to me. Any commentary related to the minutes? Uh, I thought they looked good. All right. Just one, it should be the April 12th meeting minutes, not the 26th. Oh, okay. Tonight. Okay, with that modification, is I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of April 12th, 2022. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Abstain. I didn't miss. <laughs> Very good. Minutes are approved. Okay. We will move on to the public hearings for tonight. Uh, do we have a notice that uh, somebody can... Read for us. Thank you. There will be a public hearing conducted by the Granby Planning and Zoning Commission on April the 26th, 2022 at 7 p.m. at the Granby Town Hall Meeting Room, 15 North Granby Road, to hear the, and consider the following item. Application seeking to opt out of the parking requirements as outlined in Public Act number 21-29, file Z-5Z22. At the hearing, interested persons may participate using the information on the agenda. All this information is located on the town's website. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Abby, would you like to get us started with a little bit of background about uh, this first item? Yeah, so Public Act number 2129 that was passed last year um, requires that zoning regulations uh, shall not require more than one parking space for each studio or one bedroom unit or more than two parking spaces for each dwelling unit with two or more bedrooms unless the municipality opts out. Um, our current zoning regulations require 1.5 spaces for a one bedroom unit, so we are half a space over um, the provision in that public act. In discussions with the commission uh, over the past several months, it was indicated that due to a lack of other transportation op options in town, um, the fact many people rely on their cars, it was in, the commission felt it was important to make sure that there was adequate on-site parking for de development. So there was, I think, um, a sense that we should keep our parking regulations as is with the 1.5 spaces. Um, to prevent both overflow parking on nearby streets and also on other properties where it might not be desired. Um, <clears throat> so if the commission is inclined to opt out, that's why you're holding a public hearing tonight. Um, after it's decided what you want to do, then it will get referred over to the Board of Selectmen um, to complete the process. Okay. Okay, so with that background, uh, if there uh, is... Uh, any discussion that the board would like to entertain before I open up for a public comment? It is pretty straightforward. Yep. It's a two-thirds vote for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So with that, I'll open it up to public comment. Is there anybody who would like to speak about uh, this particular public act we're voting on tonight? Anybody on the phone? Okay. There's no, there's no video. Okay. 
Hold on for a minute. I'm going to hand you over the phone. Uh, I'm not sure if if, uh, if if you might have the ability and all those that are on the, the the phone tonight because of the technical difficulties. If if you had the opportunity to follow along on Granby Community TV, you could watch us live and then speak to us via the phone. Just for the next couple of hearings, that would be excellent if you could do that. I think it's channel in Granby channel 16. 16. Okay, I'm going to hand you over to Abby, and she'll give you a quick synopsis. So Public Act 2129 that was passed last year by the state um, states zoning regulations shall not require more than one parking space for each studio or one bedroom dwelling unit or more than two parking spaces for each dwelling unit with two or more bedrooms unless the municipality opts out. Uh, Granby's current zoning regulations requires 1.5 spaces for a one bedroom unit and two spaces for two or more bedrooms. So we are over by half a space for uh, the one bedroom unit per the Public Act. The commission has discussed this before due to a lack of other transportation options in town. Many people rely on their cars. So it is the commission's general opinion that it's important to make sure that developers provide adequate parking um, on site to prevent overflow parking on adjacent properties, as well as on street parking that may cause safety issues. So the commission is considering tonight whether to opt out of this provision and keep our zoning regulations as is. If they vote to opt out, then it will be referred over to the Board of Selectmen for final action. Thank you. Okay, so with that synopsis on the phone, uh, would, is there anybody that would like to comment? Okay, hearing none, we'll, uh, we'll move on and uh, so with that, with uh, considering we've already had a discussion on this topic, uh, we've opened up for public comment and there is none, I will entertain a motion to move this on to the Board of Selectmen. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Okay, could I lean on you for the public action? There will be a public hearing conducted by the Planning and Zoning Commission on April 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. at the Granby Town Hall Meeting Room, 15 North Granby Road, to hear the following item. Application seeking to opt out of an accessory apartment requirement as outlined in Public Act Number 21-29, File Z-6-22. At the hearing, interested persons may participate using the information on the agenda. All this information is located on the town's website. Okay, Abby, would you like to give us some more detail? Sure. So the same public act that we just uh, discussed regarding the parking also had a provision in there regarding accessory dwelling units, also known as accessory apartments. So under Public Act 2129, there's a provision that um, requires a municipality to approve an accessory apartment on all lots with a single family home, unless the municipality chooses to opt out. And there are specific criteria that um, a town would have to follow. So for example, under that act, the accessory apartment may be attached to or located within the single, single family home or detached from the house. Um, the accessory apartment could be at least a thousand square feet or 30% the size of the primary structure. Um, you couldn't require the apartment to have an exterior door. Um, you can't require them to be served by separate utilities. And the public act states that the approval process shall not require a public hearing, special permit, or special exception. So basically it would all be subject to staff approval. When the commission discussed this uh, specific provision of the public act, there were some concerns, um, especially regarding the provision that a detached apartment could be allowed on all lots, just subject to staff approval without going through the special permit process. I mean, I think there was a general sense that it could be an issue on smaller lots, um, if an accessory apartment wasn't you know, compatible with the neighborhood too, emergency access issues. So the commission decided to hold a public hearing to opt out of this state provision for the accessory apartments. Okay, so uh, for the board, uh, we've, uh, as Abby has outlined, we have discussed this item as well, and uh, I believe that we're here tonight. Um, this item dovetails nicely with the second item. We're going to opt out of, of the, the state um, uh, 
proposed rag and we are going to keep our rag with some modification. So the first step of that is to opt out um, before we put, uh, put it up for public comment on the first part, which is simply opting out. Um, is there any comment on the board? None here. All right, I'll open up for in the room first. Is there any public comment regarding opting out of the uh, proposed state regulation? Okay, on the telephone, anybody would, is there anybody who would like to comment about opting out of the state reg? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will uh, close the public comment and uh, I'll entertain a vote to uh, opt out and move this also on to the board of selection. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, one more time. There will be a public hearing conducted by the Planning and Zoning Commission on April the 26th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Granby Town Hall meeting room, 15 North Granby Road, to hear and consider the following item. Application seeking an amendment to the zoning regulations, section 1.4 and 8.5 accessory apartments to allow attached Apartments as of right and detached apartments by special permit. File Z 7 22. Thank you, Paula. Uh, Abby, would you like to give us some detail? Right. So, as previously stated, um, this application does dovetail nicely with the Commission's decision to opt out of the accessory apartment regulation. Um, so while Public Act 2129 was passed, um, which outlined certain provisions that would have to be met for accessory apartment, and the commission didn't agree with all those provisions. I think, um, you know, when we talked about this regulation, there were some items that the commission thought would be beneficial um, and might, you know, be worth considering to um, incorporate into a new accessory apartment regulation. So specifically, those changes are allowing attached apartments. Um, so this would be an apartment that's, you know, in a basement or in addition to a home, allowing those accessory apartments by right. Um, so currently, any accessory apartment requires special permit approval through the commission. Um, as the commission is aware, you know, over our discussions over the past few months, um, these applications that come before the commission have tend to be approved, especially those ones that are attached to the home. Um, so the commission felt, provided there were criteria, clear criteria outlined, attached apartments um, would be appropriate to permit as a rate just subject to staff approval and obviously a building permit. Um, so section 8.5.1 outlines the provisions for an attached accessory apartment. So this would be permitted with any lot in the R30, R50, R2A, R4A, and the Granby Center zones. Um, and that's those are the current zones where it's allowed. Um, so obviously attached to the home, only one of the units shall be rented. The other unit shall be occupied by the property owner. Um, the apartment shall contain a living area of no more than 1,200 square feet. If it, that living area is in excess of 1,200 square feet, there is a provision in there that someone could apply for a special permit, so it's kind of that relief valve. Um, the apartment shall have its own access to the outside and parking area, shall have its own kitchen and bath, um, there shall be at least three parking spaces for the apartment and then the primary structure. Um, this notes it can be re-inspected uh, by the build, building official. There shall only be one accessory apartment per lot. Um, any exterior lighting shall be full cutoff and then no additional entrances shall be located um, on any wall plane facing a street um, unless special permit approval is obtained. So those are the provisions for the attached apartment. And again, those would be allowed as of right under this regulation. Under the proposed regulation, section 8.5.2, a detached accessory apartment. So this would be a standalone structure, either its own unit or perhaps over a detached garage or in a barn, something like that. That would be allowed by special permit. So that would still require an applicant to come before this commission through the regular special permit process. Um, so it would be subject to the same criteria as the ex attached apartment in terms of size, you know, having its own kitchen and bath. Um, however, there are some provisions when it comes to setbacks. So section 8.5.2.1, 
The detached accessory apartment shall comply with the required setbacks in Section 5 unless it is located within a detached garage or barn. Then it shall comply with the required setbacks for Section 8.1.3.2 or 8.15.10. So those provisions would require the structure be set back um, either the longest linear dimension of the barn or garage, one and a half times the height, or a distance that complies with Section 5, whichever is greatest. Um, and something that I wanted to ask the commission about, so we have that greater setback required if it's located in a detached garage or barn, but if it's a standalone unit, that greater setback wouldn't apply. So it would just have to be set back a distance in the underlying zone. So if there's a 15 foot side yard, if you have a 20 by 40 structure, it could be placed 15 feet from the side property line. So it's just something I want you to, if you're okay with that, or if you wanna think about that, maybe address it. Um, and then again, it would be subject to the same criteria as uh, the attached apartments. And then section 8.5.3, this is an accessory apartment by special permit. Um, so this would allow someone who wants to build a larger accessory apartment over 1,200 square feet or have an entrance to be located on a wall plane facing the street come before the commission for special permit approval. Um, and then we add a definition to section 1.4 for accessory apartment. I know that was a lot. Any questions? We were talking mm -hmm. about the setbacks yeah. of a um, detached. This is going to be by special permit. It is. So does the commission have the ability to look at each one and say, well, it makes sense there to be that close because it's not close to another home? Or do you have to be so consistent? Yeah. You need to I'll, be consistent. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, my recommendation, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Me too. Um, it should follow what the barn or garage okay. setbacks are. Agreed. And if they need to go closer, they can apply for a variance. Right. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that wholeheartedly. That was just something that we, we must have missed in the, yeah. in the language when we were discussing it. There should be a distinction between whether it's an existing structure or a new structure. It should be the same. Okay. So then that um, section would just be modified to reflect that same language, you know, the, um, a distance that complies with section five, the uh, greatest linear dimension or one and a half times yeah. the height. So I'll just pull that in for, for that. So, so with that, well, I'm sorry, I didn't go Yeah, ahead. something that I just want to point out, too. So um, not only was this kind of spurred by the commission reacting to Public Act 2129, but it is consistent with our plan of conservation and development, um, which has a goal to provide opportunities for a greater number of mix of new housing units. Um, and certainly this changed the regulation by enabling attached um, kind of a simpler path forward, I think, would achieve that. I agree. Um, you know, we've spent a great deal of time as a board uh, looking at the, uh, the new regulations that were proposed by the state and then looking at our own and try to make some compromises that made sense based on our current activity and behavior in the town. And I think it was a good compromise by allowing under um, what I think is a, is a pretty good set of regulations with regard to the attached. And then um, if people want to detach, they can bring it to us and have a discussion. So I think it provides a good compromise. Um, with that, um, uh, correct me, and I, I should remember, but as I get older, I did, did this go to Krog yet, or will it go out? It did. It did. Yep. And Krog had no issue. Right. Okay. So with that, uh, I'll open it up for additional discussion before we take some public comment. All right. I'll okay. take... Um, what's that? Yep. All right. I'll take uh, public comment from the room if there's any related to uh, this particular item. Yeah, 
Well, so we've opted eight out of the state mandate. Yes, there were a, a, a bunch of, uh, uh, as Abby started to speak to, uh, several of the items we've responded to tonight, we had to respond to because of some changes in state regulations. We had to choose as a commission to either adopt the state reg or, or opt out, or opt out with modification. In this particular instance, we already had a very good accessory apartment regulation we chose to opt out of the state and modify our own, and that's what we've done tonight. Okay, but and, and the modifications that you've discussed this evening um, are uh, enable uh, residents to buy right as a accessory apartment. They as opposed to having to get a permit. Am I understanding that correctly? Well, partially. So the, the modification, under the current regulation, any accessory apartment requires a permit, a special permit yep. before the planning and zoning. What we're offering yep. is that for the any uh, apartment within a primary residence would no longer require a special permit. It would just require the uh, building permit process who would make sure the accessory apartment complies with the regulation. If somebody wanted a detached apartment, i.e. out somewhere on an outbuilding on the property, that would have to become, that would have to come before the commission as it does today. Okay, okay, very helpful, thank you. You're welcome. Is, uh, I might as well finish on the phone. Any other comments uh, from others on the phone? Okay, hearing none, and you'll get another chance if, if uh, you know, I'll, I'll open it back up one more time for the phone. So, in the room. <laughs> That's fine. Glendale, 29 Grand River Road, how are you? Very good. Good, good, good. Um, so, the only rationale I've heard for doing this so far, and it's kind of related to the affordable housing stuff that we're talking about, is the special permit is a kind of deterrent, right? It, to the homeowner, they're less likely maybe to even attempt to add the apartment to their home because of the onerous process of having to come up here before you guys and whatever. I don't know if there's a fee or anything. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. $260. Okay. So, um, so, aside from that, the permit being sort of a, a deterrent to somebody who would normally otherwise want to do this, is there another rationale in your mind for, in your minds for, for making the change, for removing the requirement for the permit? Yes. Well, at least in my, in my view, Having heard so many applications for um, accessory apartments from so many different people, whether it's the children coming home, whether it's the sick mother, all the good reasons, um, we never turn one down. We have building permits. We have the building, you know, they come in and make sure the building is proper. We have certain regulations to make sure that it's safe and done well. And it just, to me, it seemed like an extra burden of money and time when they can go to the um, building department, work with Abby, work with uh, Joel, and work on their project. Because you're not changing anything as far as the public can see. You're adding grandma or Sonny who comes back home into the house in their own living space. You're implying that there's a familial relationship. Often it is. Sometimes it isn't. But, sometimes. It, but it isn't necessary. It doesn't right? necessary. And, and with the changing requirements for housing in town and everything it, else, it it's likely be. that yes, in the future yeah. that it could be completely yeah. unrelated yeah. to parties all yeah. So, um, so um, So I'm, I'm probably just trying to think of like you know outlier cases that might happen. But let's say I built the let's say I built the accessory apartment and then I ended up selling the house. Somebody else bought it, maybe even a corporation or somebody that's not a resident, and they the people that ended up occupying the house are It's not really in compliance with right the, the revised regulations. What what are, what are the legal or, or, or procedural even remedies here in town for residents if they're if they're injured somehow by, I mean, you know, their property rights are injured by, by the uh, non-compliant use of that property. And by removing the special permit, are you removing one layer of protection from that the resident might have to be able to go back to the town first and say, hey, look, whatever's going on here next door to me is not 
kosher and you know so is there a is there a substantial enough risk there that given the fact that we don't turn these down anyway it's really not well I'll, I'll take a piece at it and then i'll have to ask abby to clean it up a little bit i do believe in in the in the reg that we in the reg that we've drafted we did build in uh, an opportunity for a, a right to inspect so that if there is a complaint of uh, somebody attempting to not have an owner-occupied situation, such as, you know, as you've described, uh, create a two-family of sorts, and it was reported to the uh, zoning enforcement officer, I'm sure we would exercise our right for inspection, and uh, the town has remedies associated with compliance. Yep, it's just like any other zoning enforcement action, if there's a violation. And then there's not the only other thing I have here is that there's, no, there's not really like a maximum number of occupants or vehicles or whatever again. So if I, you know, you could cram as many occupants and vehicles as you wanted to into whatever site department, which could, and it could be a sizable apartment if it was 1,200 square feet or even larger if the, if the main building was so I'll just, again, I'll take a stab at it and I'll have Abby clean it up if I'm wrong, but I'm, I know just from general occupancy and certificate of occupancies that are issued on residences, there are a number of bedrooms and occupants used typically allowed in the home. And, and again, if that was to be found not in compliance, I'm sure that the zoning enforcement officer could be notified and act as necessary. Fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, last thing, sorry. I should have, should have said it before. Um, so, of all of the of all of the permits that you've granted over the years, I mean, how how typical is it that there are conditions attached to the permits? And was there a review of those conditions to say hey, what kinds of things do we ask for? And did that no. did, did that influence your uh, turn it over your, your regulation? No, there were rarely <laughs> conditions attached to permits yeah. for this. Um, and it's because the criteria is very well spelled out in the zoning regulations. So if an applicant um, met the criteria, there typically isn't a need to assign additional conditions. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So any other uh, public comment from the room? Okay, I'm going to turn it back over to the phone. Um, after hearing some of the public comment in the room, anybody else on the phone, would you like to comment? Uh, hearing none, I think we're all prepared to close the public session. Okay. And um, on this particular, just to keep us straight here, are we, uh, we'll have some additional discussion, but do we, this is, we're not moving this on to the boarding select, but this is for us. Correct, right? okay. yep. So with that, uh, public comment is uh, closed and we will move on to the next agenda. There will be a public hearing conducted by the Grand Planning and Zoning on April 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. In the Granby Town Hall meeting room, 15 North Granby Road, to hear and consider the following item. Application seeking a site plan modification and a special permit under zoning regulations 8.6.13 and 8.6.14 for a bocce court, patio area, an illuminated freestanding stand sign, and a sign that exceeds the allowable size for property located at 2 and 3 Murphy's Way, the Grand, TI, and PDM zones, file Z-8-22. At the hearing, interested persons may participate using the information on the agenda. All this information is located on the town's website. Thank you, Paula. Is the applicant here? <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, would you take this to the podium? <laughs> it's going low tech to me. Semi low tech. It still is a cell phone. Uh, do you want me to jump in, Abby? Or yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Reggie Cronstead here, one of the owners and developers of the Grand Luxury Homes up on 202. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about an amenity addition that we want to add to the front of the site. 
Um, as everyone probably remembers, we came back to you guys probably in the fall to add amenities to the middle of the site. We wanted to do a full pool and clubhouse. Now, frankly, being under construction since the fall, we've realized that amenities are huge. We have active discussions with all of our tenants in the adjacent apartment complex. And we frankly found a really good area up by the homes that have been underutilized. And we think it's an easy way to frankly program for more amenities, especially for the first set of tenants that move into the homes that won't have the clubhouse or pool ready until more like spring of next year. So we have kind of an initial layout up here that we've gone through with Abby a few times. Our plan is to frankly just add a bocce court. Uh, we've toured some of the other competing projects uh, in Simsbury, in Avon, in Windsor. The bocce court seems to get good traffic. People want it. It's a nice amenity. We've also added an open pergola and a fire pit. So this is really just the three small additions that we want to add. Uh, if you could picture the site, this is on the left-hand portion of Merthyr's Way, right before the first home starts. So it's a really nice amenity to at least have for the tenants that are just going to be moving in come late summer. Um, and it just gives people more privacy and you know, their own amenity offering outside of the apartments. So uh, we're excited to hopefully get this built. Uh, construction is really moving on the project. And given the, the pace that we're at right now, uh, this is an amenity that we could have up you know, almost immediately after starting. And it would be something that truly services the first sets of tenants that move into the homes come late summer. Let's go to the, the next page. Uh, so here's just concept renderings for the look and feel we're going for. So as you guys probably remember, we have a few fire pits programmed for the middle of the site. We would want to go for a similar look and feel up front, which is really nice. Um, we have two fire pits at the apartment complex. They definitely get tons of use. We've used them. They're great. Uh, we want to add like an open pergola concept where people could come outside during the spring and summertime, have lunch and dinner out there. Um, I think we were talking about somewhere in the 12 to 14 foot range, so we could easily do something like a six to eight person table, families and folks that want to host people. And then we plan on adding some lights in the walkway that would be around the patio or pavers that we would plan to do. Uh, the other reason that we are coming here in front of you today is to talk about uh, two entrances um, that we want to install on both sides of the site, one being on the Canton Road side, the other being at the intersection where two Merthas and three Merthas divide. So basically, where the homes and apartments converge, we want to do a really nice sign that basically gives people direction on, you live in the apartments, you go this way, you live in the homes, you go this way. Given that we do own both communities, uh, we really want to have a grand sign that ties both together. Uh, I definitely want to go for a stone look that gives it a higher end feel. Um, so we've been speaking with Abby about the regs on signage and for the, um, for the Canton Road side, um, I know we're limited by nine feet. Um, we're very much within the context of, of those dimensions. For the area where the homes and apartments split, we want to do something grand for the grand, and uh, we want to go a little bit bigger than the nine-foot regs. So right now, what we have up here on the, the first signage uh, basically has a 12-foot dimension for the actual sign itself. And this is really where, again, the homes and apartments diverge. So you have apartments to the right, you stay straight from the homes, and I think it frankly gives anyone that comes in a real pop and we plan to do some nice lights in front of it. Um, this is private property and this isn't off of Salmonbrook, so this is over 100 feet into the, into the site off of Murtha's Way. Uh, I think signage is important. If I came in and saw really nice signage with a nice stone finish, I'd feel good and I think our tenants will really appreciate having direction, especially at night. Um, so here's the concepts for what we're going for. Definitely going to go for a stone finish. Um, we're mindful about the Canton Road resident, which is why we're not doing any illumination on that signage. But we clearly need some illumination around the main sign up front, especially when people come in at night. Uh, so this is the last slide. So again, the, the two big things that we want to talk about are 
the signage going from the nine feet to twelve feet for the main for the main entrance, and then uh, getting the amenity upgrades done at the front of the site, right by the homes. So the first question, just to be 100% clear, the the smaller sign on the Canton Road Street is compliant size-wise. Yes. And there'll be no light. No light. So, and the larger grand sign you're looking for is 100% on private property. Is in the, in the development, not uh, really unless you go into the development, it won't be seen from any of the public roadways. That's right. Okay. Thank you. It's up a hill, so you're kind of up. Yeah, because you've got freshies here, and then you kind of go up a little bit, so you're. Mm -hmm. And they've already got the the sign that's yeah. that you can see from the street, yeah. Yeah, which is already in place. Okay. Yeah, and just to clarify too, so um, with the signage, as part of their original site plan approval, they were allowed to have two sides, so one on Canton Road and one in this proposed location. Um, but again, just given the size and the illumination is why they're here for the special permit. So what kind of lighting will you have on this? Paragonal. It's all going to be brown mounted lighting. If you, if you could introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. I'm the yeah. Paragonal project manager for the Grand Pleasure Home Development. Thank um, you. It'll just be all low voltage LED lighting uh, directly onto the sign, only onto the lettering. So no excessive lighting out onto the perimeters that will shine to cars or units or homes. I have a question regarding the expansion of the bocce court patio area. Um, with the increase in bear populations, do you have trash receptacles there? And if you are you planning for trash cleanup? Is someone policing that? You know, it's something that's going to is a problem in town and it's going to continue to be a problem. We'd hate to see trash being left behind and being food for the bears to keep wandering into your properties. Sure, and frankly, it's a concern for us as well. So we have three full on-site maintenance people at the apartments right now. Two that are frankly full-time, all they're doing all day is repair and maintenance and cleaning, and we have a full-time cleaner. When we build the homes, we're definitely going to have another body, frankly, staffed on maintenance and cleaning. We pride ourselves on keeping the site clean. I think if anyone goes to the Grand on any given day, we try to maintain it with landscaping and cleaning. We also have dumpsters on both sides. So right by the amenity area, we do have a dumpster that services the apartments, which could definitely be used. We also, frankly, have our maintenance people go around daily, checking to make sure that everything looks neat and tight. And in our lease agreements with every one of our tenants, we have things like cleaning policies and procedures, if they're using the common spaces, they have to clean up after themselves. So it's definitely important. Thank you. Any other comments before I open it up to the public? Yeah, I just had a com question on the uh, bocce court. I noticed you say you got it's a recreational size bocce court. So I, I assume that means it's not whatever is required for a full size bocce court. It's much smaller. I think it's 30 or 40 percent smaller than a traditional professional bocce court. Um, but uh, we basically went with sizing that we saw in other communities. The Preserve at Great Pond has one. Uh, I've never done a bocce court at other projects, but in Connecticut, people somehow really like it. So, so, so you're okay with the small size because you're. It's recreational. This is, uh, if there's people that are really competitive, they probably don't want to be using this. This is a, a fun amenity for people, kids, grandkids, frankly, anyone that wants to be active. Um, and we just didn't want to take up so much space there, so we, we try to appropriately size it to be just a, a good amenity. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. It's quieter than tennis, too, next door. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I'll open it up to the room if there's any uh, comments. Make a comment? Yeah, if you could take the podium, there's a phone there, and announce yourself, please. Adam Hopton, 26 Glen Road, adjacent to this. Um, I appreciate the lighting. That was my big concern, uh, especially at Camp Road. Um, I am concerned a little bit about the lighting overall, and uh, especially upward facing lighting. Um, so anything that can be done for modification. Lighting of the big sign, um, but I do appreciate the concerns over the residents on the Canton Road side. Sure. So I just want to make that comment. Yeah, I can respond right here. But like Perry said, the lighting is really just going to illuminate the actual sign itself. 
I don't even think the columns, the swing columns, will even be seen. But you said upward facing. They'll be projected directly, watching it down the seats. We could look at it as an option, but they'll be projected directly onto just the letters of the grant. And on Canton Road, just to clarify, there will be no illumination of that sign. But the good point, yeah, we, we just want the sign to be clear when people come in. But I'm we'll sure this, anything the, the development itself will light up the sky anyway. But um, the lighting that you have around recreational areas, I want to switch down and facing, which is appreciated. Yeah. Well. Thank you. Any other comment from the room? Could you hand me the, the phone? Sure. Thank you. Is there any comment from uh, the, the folks who have dialed in on Zoom? Okay, hearing none. Um, last uh, last uh, opportunity for any uh, public comment and uh, anything else, uh, any other questions uh, from the commission before we close public comment? Well, well, I just wondered in light of the comment about upward facing versus downward facing lighting, would it be practical or doable to have downward facing lighting so we're not brightening the sky? So I guess my, I, I thought the same, but I think I'll, I'll maybe I'll ask, uh, you know, Abby to comment. We, we do have existing sign rigs that allow lighting, and I do know that the arm lighting, the armature lighting, um, that often faces at a sign is currently allowed. So I don't know that I, it would be within our, our uh, it would be, I don't know how if we should modify the, you know, to change the current reg that's in place for existing lighting, which does allow, I, I suppose it would be upward lighting, but it's usually, and maybe we could speak to making sure that it's of the right um, illumination to only illuminate the sign and not illuminate the, the, the sky. Is that correct, Abby? We do allow those that, that type of lighting arrangement on our signs today, correct? Yes, so it would, um, I think there's a provision in there that requires it to be directed at the face of the sign, so there's, it's not spilling out um, elsewhere so it's yeah concentrated just where it's intended to be well why don't we ask the applicant if how he would feel about downwards downward lights as opposed to upward lights i think just to kind of clarify on the upward facing lights we'd be looking at a low voltage uh warm luminescent light so it's very soft in the eyes it doesn't dissipate very far into space, if you will. Uh, and also now with technology, all the lights uh, on the site, we can direct and control where the LED actually faces pretty precisely. So we can ensure at the right angle, the right distance, uh, two feet off the, off the sign, for instance, it's truly projecting just onto the face of the sign and nothing going above and beyond past the boundary of the stone the sign. Any other questions of the applicant? Okay. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Five days. Yes, you, you have to. Thank you. It's my uh, first day as chair. Uh, we have 65 days to uh, decide, but you'll likely hear from us uh, very shortly. Thank you. Okay, Abby, receive applications and schedule public hearings. Nothing to receive. Okay. So we just have the one for the, the continuation meeting. for yep, next so meeting. So it'll be 18 and old bond, yep, for okay. time. Okay, moving on to item number eight, consideration of applicants where the commission has concluded the public hearing. So uh, the first item to discuss will be the uh, application seeking an amendment to uh, the zoning reg for accessory apartments. Any uh, discussion? The only further discussion that I just want to bring up is some clarification as to why we're lessening the restriction on the required zone, uh, acreage for the detached accessory apartment. I, you know, having lived in a one acre residential neighborhood for a good part of my time here in Granby, it seems like one acres is extremely minimal to have a detached accessory apartment. I don't know why we were uh, trying to push the limits of creating an opportunity for another apartment on such a small parcel of land. I'm very comfortable with the two acres and I'm not sure we really need to change it. The only thing I 
thing I could see is that you could have a detached garage and you'd want to put that on top of your garage. These small, I agree with you, Paula, yeah. these small neighborhoods of one acres, you know, they're, they're, they're small. They're small. You know, you're just adding another car, maybe another. Uh, you know, it, it could take deep. It could take away from the neighborhood that exists there today by adding in apartments in those neighborhoods. And uh, you know, I'm not really, not really. We've added Martha's Way. We've added the 264 units up here. There's a condo approved over by Cumberland Farm somewhere. There's our existing condos. I think we have plenty of opportunities for apartments here in the town of Granby. I don't know why we're extending it any further on by lessening that requirement. Now the, the detached or by special permit, and with that comes the ability of the lot to provide enough parking. That alone, I think, would be a, a little bit of a challenge. I think it's been very challenging for anyone to come before us with a one acre lot. And I don't, you know, I think it's so challenging that I don't even know why we're getting rid of it, the requirement to, to lessen it down to one acres. In my opinion, it's, it's probably not going to work. You know, it would have to be an exceptional lot to make it fit. We're talking about detached, right? Detached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The accessories have no problem with it whatsoever. Yeah. I, 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 and I don't disagree, but where do you, where do you draw that line? You know, is that special lot at one and three quarters? Well, I would, two just, acre? I would I mean, say the line was drawn in the past, two acres or correct. more, and it seemed to work for the town of Granby. I don't know why we're changing it now. I, you know, I remember we did have some discussion on this topic hmm. and why we decided to go from the, the, the larger lot size to the smaller lot sizes because there are um, um, lots in town where it probably could work. Um, but uh, I don't remember you know, the specific discussion as to what landed us to, to, to reduce to the one acre specifically. Um, yeah, I think there was some discussion if there's an existing detached structure, like a garage mm -hmm. or barn, that would suit, um, be suitable for a conversion to an accessory apartment if it mm -hmm. didn't meet the two acre requirement, um, allowing the commission to consider that by special permit approval. Mm -hmm. I do know, you know, there are homes in town on one acre or even smaller lots that do have detached garages. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just concerned about taking away from the aesthetics of the existing neighborhoods that are in place today and uh, adding apartments within those neighborhoods that are on the small acreage. Could that simply be a consideration for the special permit? Do we have to have an acreage requirement for a special permit? Could we have, could we fix, clean this up by eliminating the acreage requirement at all? No. Wait, what? What's that, Eric? Well, it's, it's the way it currently exists. It's two acres and larger, correct, for a detached accessory apartment. We're looking to get rid of the two acres and allow it to be one acre or larger. No, it's not specified under right. the under the draft regulations. That, so there's no minimum acreage requirement. No minimum. For that's what I thought. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. So no minimum. That's what I. I was just, right, that, right. That's what I thought we had done. We had eliminated the acreage requirement to right. be, and make them all spe detached special permits. So it's up to us to decide if the acreage is acceptable. Okay. Right. It's and appropriate and for the neighborhood. Yeah, right. For the neighborhood. The Right, so all the special permit criteria would still apply. So Section 8.2, neighborhood compatibility, parking, circulation, um, traffic, all of that, all those standards could be applied when the commission evaluates an application for this. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I was probably absent on when you guys debated these. I've been missed a few of these meetings, so you know, I'm late in the game bringing up this concern, but I'm just not comfortable. You know, I would, I would have. I grew up, lived here in Granby on a one acre residential neighborhood. I really appreciated it for what it was and uh, you know, I wouldn't want to see a change. So you know, I'm not gonna be able to approve it that way, but that's just my opinion. But knowing that it's part of the special permit, you would have a say as to whether or not it was acceptable for the particular neighborhood or location. Does that clean it up for you? Yeah, not, not for me. Um, well, I'm sorry it doesn't clean it up for you. I, I guess I I really like the special permit process, and I, I think it's worked very well for us. And I 
I guess um, I like to see flexibility in how we use land, and I like to see people have an opportunity to make use of their land efficiently. If they want to have an accessory apartment, I think exposing it to the special permit process is a reasonable way for this commission to proceed. I, I think if it's not going to be compatible in the neighborhood, we'll hear that from the neighbors, and we will drive by ourselves and take a look and say, wait a minute, this is, this is crazy, it's just not, it's not going to work, and we, we would deny the special permit or we would condition it so that the problem would go away. So I, I respectfully wish you'd change your mind, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you will. All right, thank you. <laughs> I tend to agree. I think the special permit, if we find that somebody is asking for a detached apartment that's in a, not going to work in a particular lot, housing development, or single piece of property, I think it gives us, just my opinion, it gives us the ability to say no. So, um, with that, uh, any other comment? Yeah, I mean, I like the flexibility and, you know, I mean, everybody's, you know, land is different, right? So, I mean, you know, it's certainly unlikely that you're going to be able to fit one of these on a small, but... It could be configured in such a way that it makes a lot of sense. So I like uh, the flexibility of a uh, special permit for it. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of faith in the special permit process. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I believe that um, there was one item related, to, again, to detached accessory apartment would be a slight modification to 8.5-2.1 that I had heard to um, make the requirement, the setback requirements as outlined for an existing structure the same for if somebody built a new structure. Is that correct? Um, so with that, uh, we've had some discussion on minimum acreage for detached and um, other than that, I have not heard any um, comment around modifying further the proposed changes to the existing reg. So I would entertain a motion to um, consider and approve the uh, uh, what we have on here with a modification to 8.5-2.1. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Not. Not approved. Thank you. Uh, motion carries. It's not unanimous with Brennan. Uh, not approving. Okay, moving on to the next item. We will discuss the uh, application before us for a site plan modification for a bocce court with some illumination as well as two signs. Any additional discussion? No, I thought everything looked good. I mean, that certainly seems like a reasonable uh, variance in what we allow for the sign, right? Mm -hmm. It's not facing the street. It's appropriate for the property. So it looks, seems like it'll look nice. So I agree. The, the larger sign that they're asking for is 100% on um, private property, and it sounds like uh, the uh, applicant has made special care to make sure the lighting is uh, um, appropriate for the site and dark in, uh, applies with the current sign regulations and I'm sure staff will make sure that the, the sign uh, when it's installed is uh, compliant, correct? Right. And um, uh, as far as the botch court goes, it uh, seems like it'll be a fun amenity. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I'd rather see cornhole, but yeah. <laughs> I'd rather see horseshoes. <laughs> well, they've got more land, so maybe they'll be back. <laughs> well, I did not hear um, any um, definitive discussion one way or the other regarding uh, any modifications to the application. So once again, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. We approve the application for a site plan modification and special permit under the zoning regulations for Bocce Court and for the two signs. Very good. Uh, all those in favor? Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Second by Paul. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's forget the. I go by Canton Road all the time. All right, moving on to item number nine. Consider assignment and assumption agreement, 76 West Granby Road. Yes. Um, so when the commission approved 76 West Granby Road, the 24 lot subdivision there, um, there were two documents that the commission also agreed to. So one was the open space lien, because the applicant was not providing any um, open space as part of that development, instead of they're going to pay a fee in lieu of open space. And then there was also an agreement that they could execute um, a security agreement to basically bond for the public improvements instead of putting forward a cash bond to cover everything. Um, so that those documents were executed between the town and Levesque Properties LLC, which was the developer at the time. Um, staff was informed that Levesque Properties LLC is going to be transferring the property to Harness Way Development LLC. So in order just to make sure that the new entity is subject to all the same um, restrictions and liens and agreements, um, the town attorney would like to execute an assignment and assumption agreement, which basically just transfers everything over to Harness Way Development. Um, because the commission signed off on the initial security agreement and Mark signed on your behalf, um, it's appropriate to bring it back to the commission to make sure that you're aware of the transfer and that you all agree with transferring everything to the new entity and everything will remain in place in the same. So that's the point of the motion tonight um, is to move to approve the assignment and assumption agreement between the town, Levesque Properties LLC, and Harness Way Development um, subject to review and approval by the town attorney and he is currently reviewing those, that document to make sure everything's in order. So this is just a notification, so to speak. Yeah, and just yeah, need your approval. Oh, I mean, yeah. Any any questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah, motion. Yeah, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the uh, assignment and assumption of the agreement transferring those obligations from the prior developer to the current developer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Next item, item number 10, discuss next steps regarding cannabis, the cannabis establishment zoning regulations and current moratorium. Yes, so as the commission is aware, at the last meeting we had the public comment session. Um, we heard from, I just think a couple people in the audience. Um, we did receive some written communication. I just want to point out that in your packet, we did um, receive uh, two more letters from folks regarding cannabis. Um, at that meeting, it was decided that the commission should explore developing regulations to address the use. Um, the moratorium currently expires at the end of August. So I don't think there's going to be enough time between now and then to research draft regulations um, and go through that process to have something on the books for them. And I certainly don't want to rush um, the topic as well. So if the commission agrees, I would like to prepare um, an extension of the moratorium for six months beyond August 30th. So that would provide a little bit more of a cushion. Um, so if the commission is in agreement with that, I would have to refer that over to CRA because it's basically a text amendment changing that date. So once it's referred to CRA, then the commission could set the public hearing for their first meeting in June So to consider that. We would have to have a public hearing to consider the extension? Correct, because okay. it is a text okay. amendment. Okay. Yeah. So you think you should go for a year instead of six I'm months based on the thing. steps that are involved here? If, yeah, it's, it's up to the commission. If, yeah, if you. I, I am better. strongly in favor of taking a lot of time, time. to okay. think about this for, for a particular reason. I think we will learn something mm -hmm. from the experience of other communities that set up these places and we'll see how it goes. Plus, I would like our police chief to be able to weigh in on all this stuff because I have done a little research on my own and it is a, a fraught area for law enforcement people dealing with this and I just I just think we're better off waiting as far as I'm concerned we could do it for two years so we were all pretty unanimous as a board that we wanted to pursue this so I think that that is a and we also agreed that we would do it 
um, thoughtfully, artfully, and take our time. So I think all of that is consistent with that. And nothing says that if we uh, uh, do well uh, in um, timing that we can't put this uh, forward before the, more, the before the one year. Correct? Yes, that's sure. true too. That's correct. So I, there's no, it doesn't seem like there's a downside. It, it just eliminates the need for us to redo this paperwork all over again if we don't hit six months. Very true. I have a question. When you're going to be working on this, you're looking at it, to me there's a difference between having stores and having a farmer who wishes to grow marijuana. How yeah. does that work? I, I'm sorry, I was not here and I didn't actually watch that part. Of it. Yeah, so the cannabis establishments, um, it's very clear it's all indoor. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, outdoor growing of cannabis is not recognized as agriculture. Oh, it's um, not. Right, so that would not be allowed. Um, so yeah, this is strictly just the indoor grow operations um, and retail sales. Oh, I see. There are specific state regulations with regard to outdoor growing, correct? Uh, for hemp, yes. Um, I don't know about yeah. cannabis, okay. um, but all I do know is that it's not considered agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, that could potentially change, but at least for now, this is just focused on the actual facilities and not any outdoor space. So I only remember from the news stories and whatnot, but regarding outdoor, I thought that uh, it's not in effect yet, but at some point during the timeline of this being rolled out, the average uh, person will be able to grow some number of plants. Are you saying those need to be inside or outside or does not specify? That's, that's honestly separate because that's all yeah. personal use, so I don't know the details yeah. of that. So that has nothing to do with anything we have to regulate. No. Yeah, this is just, yeah. Good. I would definitely, uh, the year, or I wouldn't be at all unhappy with the two-year moratorium giving us plenty of time. Well, we can you know, take, we can extend the moratorium. That's what I'm saying. And then you've got it done, so you don't have to go back through all this again. You can take your time, you can study what's happening, you can see how other towns are doing, and we'll, we'll know better. And as, as Eric said, check in with, with law enforcement and how it helps. Well, I, I would be I would be a fan for this yeah. in favor for this particular extension in the moratorium for one year, yeah. and then if, if we run out of time, we'll be talking about a uh, further extension. One year is is quite a bit of time. And it goes fast. It goes awful fast now. Especially as we get older, it goes faster and faster. I, I'm in favor of a one year. One year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Me too. So what I'll do then, um, I'll get that text change over to Krog for a year, um, extending it from this August to August 2023, and then that'll be on the agenda for acceptance and scheduling the hearing for June. Very good. Okay. You'll still be here? I don't know. <laughs> <Pretty> close. <laughs> so when, when are you due? June 11th. All right, moving on to item number 11, staff reports and correspondence. Um, just one update about the DOT project in Granby Center. I'm sure you've all seen the silt fence is up. They're working on drainage along Hartford Avenue, um, so that's moving along. Um, we are in touch with them on pretty much a weekly basis, and we are doing our best to get um, updates posted on the town website and the Facebook page as well for the town, so people can always stay informed um, that way. They're not currently planning any detours, um, but eventually there will be. So we'll be sure we do our best to communicate to folks uh, what those plans are. Tem temporary. Yeah, Tem <laughs> they have temporary detours ongoing. Yes. So they had Hartford Ave shut down one way. Yeah, they are doing, yeah. But nothing. All right, moving on to uh, commissioner reports and correspondence. Does uh, anybody have anything to share? I do. I drove down to um, Bill Pond Road to take a look at what was going on as part of that application. And uh, just having driven through the neighborhood, I noticed that the Grandview Auto Wash, they have that shipping container yep. parked on their lawn. And I wasn't, oh. no, I wasn't aware of it. Is that something that's new? Is that something that's been approved as part of their business? Yeah, so we've been in touch with them. Um, they're currently working on doing some upgrades inside. Um, and because of COVID, it's been taking them a long time to get all the equipment they need. So they are using it for temporary storage. So it should be out of there by the end of the summer because, yeah, it's not supposed to be there. But we're okay. Thank you. They're working on it. Anything else? 
Well, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is over. Thank you. Thanks, Eric.